Now that Season 6 of Game of Thrones is over, and you're looking to get your Game of Thrones fix while waiting for Season 7, if you're thinking about playing the Game of Thrones the RPG game, hold that thought and watch our review coming up right now. Game of Thrones the RPG game was released in 2012 by Cyanide Studios back when the HBO series was relatively new. The game takes place sometime after Robert's rebellion and runs parallel to the events at the beginning of season 1 of the show around the time of Jon Arryn's death. The narrative follows two main characters that you get to play as, a brother of the Night's Watch named Morris and a red priest named Alistair. You'll be jumping between the two in between story chapters, building up to a finale and unraveling some pretty interesting plots along the way, Game of Thrones style. Being in an RPG game with RPG elements, there's a decent amount of character customization allowing you to pick between three class types, such as the option to be a melee sword and board, a dual wielding warrior or a ranged fighter. There's also an interesting strength and weakness mechanic where you'll get to pick a few good attributes such as good leadership and balance it out by picking a weakness that costs the same amount of points such as fear of fire. These all tie together in the game's third person mode combat system, a hybrid of action based combat with the ability to slow time and queue skills that you've unlocked in your character skill tree using points that you earn from leveling up. Needless to say, Game of Thrones the RPG is a story heavy game featuring tons and tons of voice dialogue that play out in linear maps in various popular areas of Westeros. So enough with the overview, let's get to the pros and cons to see if this game is truly a good time sink while we wait for season 7 to come out. To shake things up, we'll be starting with the cons this time around. The cons. Draggy dialogue. I'm a veteran of many RPG games and I know the core element of a great RPG game is having great dialogue in your cutscenes delivered via speech or text. Having the characters articulate and deliver plot points is an important aspect in any RPG game and Bioware games have spoiled us a lot with their dialogues I'm sure. In comparison, the dialogue in Game of Thrones the RPG are a nightmare. They're too long, obnoxiously redundant, especially in the opening few hours. It really got on my nerves that things which can be said in 5 minutes takes double the time to execute with the characters taking their own sweet time to read off the script. For players new to the Song of Ice and Fire aka Game of Thrones universe, I can see how all this bloated dialogue can provide an in-depth crash course about the setting, but ultimately it hinders the flow of the game and saps the life out of you. Shame. Voice acting. Dialogues and cutscenes are fully voiced and to be honest, there's some pretty good voice acting for certain characters such as Varys, who appears in the game voiced by Conleth Hill, who portrays Varys in the TV show. However, everyone else is really, really bad. It's so inconsistent too, especially for the two main characters you play as. Morris and Alistair's voice acting is bland and only start to change to reflect a certain point in the story which takes hours and hours to get to. The first few hours however, you're stuck with characters that have as much emotion as a brick and it's painful to listen to. Shame. <laughs> graphics. The graphics are pretty disappointing, especially for a title release in 2012. Objects and textures look bland and the environments are lifeless. It almost looks like a game released two gens ago. I mean, take a look at Morse's companion dog. This must be the ugliest dog I've seen in a video game, period. To their credit, a lot of effort was put into getting the look of the main characters from the show to be accurate and it shows, but at the expense of the rest of the game, I don't think it was a good idea. Criminally, the game also makes no effort to hide that it reuses the same character models for NPCs over and over again, even in cutscenes. That's just lazy. Shame. Bad camera. From the back, the camera mimics that of the legendary Skyrim, but don't be fooled. It's a poorly implemented camera system that requires you to hold on the right mouse button to look around which also happens to be the button for you to turn your character while moving. This makes for a very awkward system especially when moving in confined areas such as tunnels or caves. And what is up with the annoying auto zoom? Every time you move and stop your character, the camera zooms in for no reason at all. Shame. Manual saves. What year was this released in again? 2012? Right. Manual saves are a thing of the past and should be taken out back and shot dead. There were so many times I died during a chapter and then realized I had to restart the level because I didn't pause the game and save manually. Autosave do exist but only when you reach a new chapter or checkpoint. Hey, 2000 called. They want their manual saves back. Shame. Progression payoff. It's not worth it. Let me elaborate. 
The finale at the end is great and some of you might be thinking that it was worth the time. Not for me. My playthrough lasted nearly 30 hours and 20 of which were slow, boring, and consisted of enduring every shameful con we've talked about so far. It's almost torture to sit through that even for the good ending. Hardcore Game of Thrones fans aside, I guarantee any neutral gamer with a slight hint of curiosity towards this game because of the TV show will quit 10 hours in. Anyone want to take the challenge? Shame. The Pros Authentic Westeros To the developer's credit, they set out to make the world as authentic as it can be and to a certain extent, they succeeded. Maps such as King's Landing and Castle Black looked great and you can't help but want to explore every inch of the place in a video game. The fact that they also got characters from the TV show to voice their in-game counterparts helped cement the authenticity. The Codex The Codex is an in-game encyclopedia for the Game of Thrones universe and is actually pretty damn informative. There's lots of entries to unlock and provides heaps of backstory and lore that the novel and TV show fans can appreciate and the casual newcomers can grasp easily. Of course, there's also the internet but it can't hurt to read up on a certain house or faction or event while you're playing to help with the immersion. Combat System Yes, the animations are bad but we're giving props for the combat system, which was something fresh for its time. It tries to be different with the unique skill trees that makes deciding which attack combos to use during the slow-mo sequence fun, but it does get pretty repetitive fast. Choices We've crapped on the dialogue system and deservedly so, but kudos to the developers for implementing dialogue choices that actually do matter and your actions and choice of words will have consequences and contribute later on in the game. Our verdict. So is Game of Thrones the RPG a lazy cash-in or is it an honest effort by the developers that failed? Playing this 4 years later, we feel it's the latter, but the developers were overly ambitious and tried to create a game that was way out of their league. We are by no means making an excuse on their behalf and we're showing no mercy here. At 38 Malaysian Ringgit, Game of Thrones the RPG is a painfully average game that doesn't reward you for your time, effort, and money. Fans like myself can certainly appreciate the good that it offers with its world, characters, and lore, but when you peel the Game of Thrones layer off, you're left with a shell of a bad game that I wouldn't even play for free. We're giving this a 4 out of 10. Shame. So go and rewatch every season while waiting for season 7. Or you could play the other two Game of Thrones games out there. Hmm. Let us know in the comments below if you'd like to see us review those. Well, that's it from us. I'm Adrian from Game Reviews Malaysia. And as always, give us a thumbs up if you like our content and do subscribe to us for more reviews. Guys, we're really close to hitting 100 subs on our channel and it would mean the world to us if you subscribe and supported us to help us grow. Thanks for watching.